dear followers of Regeneration International and the Organic Consumers Association, we're here at COP25, which is the Convention of Parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And so we're here with many partners, not only belonging to our organization per se, but everyone who's like-minded in building soils, drawing down carbon, and just making people get food from ethically and regeneratively um, productive practices. And today is the 4th of December 2019, uh -huh. which is International Farmers Day. And I'm here with a farmer, Precious, Precious Peary. <laughs> so Precious. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're a cattle rancher in Africa. Yeah. I'm a facilitator for cattle ranchers. I work with cattle ranchers. Of course, I grew up with cattle, chickens and goats. And so your work is actually having a physical impact on the carbon cycle. Yeah. Can you explain? Okay, so here's the thing that I've been learning about the power of photosynthetic processes working in grasslands. As grasses decay, they form massive, massive layers under the soil that build up the structure of the soil is a biggest carbon sink. The soil is the most important carbon sink that we have right now. The oceans are overloaded, but our grasslands are desertifying and they make about two thirds of the world's surfaces. So these animals that we're using to heal the grasslands are helping us really put in soil and water in the soil and eventually draw down the excess carbon. You can grow your animals off the land and keep the cycle of life going while benefiting both the soil, the animal and the people. Uh, Precious is um, one of the associate directors of Regeneration International, uh, represents Regeneration International uh, in Africa, in Africa yeah. uh, and also is doing a, a tremendous job with uh, policymakers uh, in different African countries working with the African Union. Could you talk to us about that? Okay, so we have a partnership with an incredible organization called the African Sovereignty for Food Alliance, AFSA. They started really, you know, driving and bringing key persons to the table to come up with a roadmap to now influence the big board, which is the African Union. Because once you influence, most of our policies come from that top body, which is the African Union, and then we then filter them down to countries. Well, why are we targeting policy? Because I think influence must be both at the grassroots and then you go to the civil society and the policymakers. So, and which is a, a this is a major step forward for mm. Africa mm -hmm. uh, with the work that you're you're doing here, uh, knowing that um, uh, Sahara and sub -Sahara, the Sahara is expanding, mm -hmm. uh, sub-Saharan countries are getting drier and drier. Uh, the United Nations now uh, are, have declared that they're expecting 149,000, 149 million. Uh, climate refugees uh, by the year 2050 um, and sustainable regenerative land management is uh, is a is a tangible uh, weapon to to prevent that uh, from happening and um, policies are changing uh, Uganda got its first organic policy out last year which is a huge step um, Namibia, has, Namibia has an incredible rangelands policy. Yeah, so they've been leading in the area of rangelands. Mm -hmm. and so I think all of us are learning from them. You know, implementation is another story, but a proper, solid document. That's what we need to start off with. And then the civil society can then hold governments accountable based on the promise. It's, it's, it's almost like the Green New Deal. Mm -hmm. Whether they knew what they meant or not, we are riding on that wave, you know, to, to make sound agriculture possible. It's World Farmers Day today and the farmer is the most important person. The farmer is the future. If the farmer does not get to a place where they are regenerative, we are set for the worst. Thank you so much, yeah. Precious. Um, i say word out because uh, Regeneration International is also in Chile. Chile. So hi guys, hi everyone. We're standing in solidarity with you in these COP spaces. So this year we have a delegation uh, here in Madrid, a small delegation uh, and a larger de delegation in Chile. As most of you know, uh, COP25 was scheduled to happen in Chile, but had to be moved to Spain 
uh, due to ongoing unrest uh, linked to social inequalities, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Our team have been working throughout 2019 um, with our movement in Chile, the regenerative movement in Chile, so we could not let them down. It's important to support regenerative organic agriculture and to support farmers who are doing this because we have a massive target, the Climate Paris Agreement, mm -hmm. the SDGs and the Coronivia Agreements. All this can only be met if we are really conscious about the soil and helping farmers transition from industrial agriculture. I don't think everyone's staying in industrial agriculture because they want to, but it's because maybe people feel trapped because information has been shared for so long mm. that industrial agriculture is the only way out. I see that a lot when I work with farmers in the communities. They look at you weirdly if you mm. try and introduce transitioning. But then when people see the changes, they see that they don't have to spray for pests anymore. There are many traditional ways of managing weeds, including green cropping, manuring and mulching. And so people are like, oh, I didn't have to spray anything this year. But these small farmers, these smallholder farmers make a bigger unit to achieve our SDGs, the Paris Agreement and the Coronivia Joint Agriculture Agreements. So we're signing off. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time. We will be back uh, with more interviews. Uh, interviews coming uh, tomorrow for uh, International World Soil Day. Yeah. Uh, please, please, please sign up to our newsletter at regenerationinternational.org and follow us over the next 10 days here at COP in Madrid.